want to, <laughs> I want to introduce this one. My, my damn podcast. <laughs> no. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Cool Down Timer. I'm one of your hosts, Floyd. And I am your other normal host, Alex. And today we have a special guest, Mr. H. Mr. H. Oh, no, I'm not German. He is joining us today via phone. So it it may not be super clear, but... He is in Alaska, and it's our best option at this point, as long as we're recording in a car. (laughs) Those crazy Alaskans. I'm rugged. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, um, what are are our topics today, Well, Well, let's start off our... This is actually like the third attempt that we've done for this episode. The other two just did not go well at all. Um, Maybe we'll include some of those, you know, those wonderful... You guys have been hitting the cactus juice a little too hard, if you know what I mean. (laughs) (laughs) So, for our our third attempt at our fourth episode, we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. It's D&D. Eh. And yet another situation mr you know how are we such good friends we don't agree on anything (laughs) like literally nothing i only hate the things you love and i only hate the that's not true i like everything i'm pretty easy to get along with (laughs) you know c.s lewis said that a man's first friend is his exact copy and his second friend is his exact opposite (laughs) well that is actually kind of weird because mr h you were kind of my first friend and you were my second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to. Well, we. I ended up becoming friends with you after you stole Mister H from me. I didn't steal him. You left. <laughs> well, excuse me. Here nor there. Don't Everything we talk about is neither here nor there, Mister H. <laughs> so, Dungeons and Dragons. I love Dungeons and Dragons. I. I am depressed whenever I play Dungeons and Dragons. I am depressed whenever he plays in my Dungeons and Dragons game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah, it, D&D. It's a fun little thing. Um, I don't know where to start on this. I've been playing D&D for four years. I got Mr. H into D&D. You did? Yeah. Well, really? Debatable. Well, I, you played your first session with me, didn't you? Yes, that's a fact. Both um, of us were. That. Yeah. We uh, we had talked yeah, about it before. We had talked about it before, and then I ran into some friends at college that I knew from when I was younger, and they played D&D, and then I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm trying it. And we tried it at, D&D, at, at college, and I played it, and I loved it. Eh. And now I DM, which I used to hate DMing, but now I love it. D&D makes me more fully aware of the inherent meaninglessness to existence. You are such a depressing person. Yep. I tell you about the... that he means he just does whatever the heck he wants without rhyme or reason. Yeah, I don't think that you get enough character behind your character. Though it is weird. Um, Alex has joined me on several smaller sessions, and he plays very interestingly. Most people come up with a, you know, a character, and then they play, and then they kind of develop a personality as they go on. He comes up with a full story arc and then tries to enact that story arc. It's a weird way I don't of playing. Remember this? Yeah, remember with the the story thing that you, me, and Ringo did. <laughs> <laughs> you came up with a full story arc beforehand <laughs> and then started working that out. And I was like, "That's weird," but it's an interesting way to play. It's just really weird. And then there's the whole when I like playing the. Annoying individual. <laughs> yeah. See, you should try out like leader or something. Like playing the leader of a party is a lot of fun. Oh, oh. Mm. I don't Miss... have to deal with you. Ah, roll to see if I'm getting drunk. That's what you play are now. Any girls there. Mr. H, what do you usually play in a D&D game? I don't know if I've ever actually. I, uh, I usually play the DM. <laughs> I know. But like when you're actually playing, what do you usually play? Because I don't. I've never actually played with you. Uh, no, I've only um, played an actual character like three times, and one of those times was that first game I played with you, which was just one session. Right. Um, 
I played a Pathfinder, I played Pathfinder of a character once, but usually I just play something different. Um, I play a wizard and an illusionist and a dwarf fighter. Yeah, but I mean, like, like what position in the party are you the... I, I'm assuming you're not the moron like, like uh, Alex plays. Are you the leader? Not the moron. Are you the depressed... The annoyance. Are you the depressed, powerful person? Are you the pain-in-the-ass half-orc? That's the pain-in-the-ass. That's my <laughs> No, character. the pain-in-the-ass half-orc is a specific pain-in-the-ass. Oh, it is? Oh, yes. It's <laughs> very specific. You wouldn't understand. You think, you think there'd be differences among half-orcs, but it's... it's no, always... it... Being a half orc just goes directly to someone's head. The half orc barbarian, our half orc barbarian, did a stealth mission where he kicked in a door and started screaming at people and picked someone up and ended up holding a child hostage. Huh. Something about being a half orc that brings out the worst of people. It just goes right to your head. But as for myself, I usually, if I'm going to play a character, I try to think first off what kind of character I want to play, and then I try to come up. With a pretty detailed backstory that almost nobody finds out about. And I just try to play the character as reacting however I think they'd react. However, I typically end up becoming comic relief. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's we don't have a comic relief character in our camp our current my current campaign right now. We've... I just think of a lot of funny things to say. And I tried to play a kind of depressed, quiet character well not really depressed, but <laughs> very quiet and secretive character. I could only keep it up one session. After that, I just had to say all the jokes I thought in my head, and he became kind of a wise cracking. When I play, I always play the leader. I don't, I don't always play, but when I do... Well, I recently started DMing, and I can't stop. I love it. It's so much fun. And I, that's what I'm wondering. Um, Alex, have you ever DMed? Yes, <laughs> once. And Floyd made it a horrendously miserable experience. I broke it. Um, let's just say I got my hands on a hat of disguise. Oh, I guess. I don't think on my feet well at this point. And uh, I'm very fluent with the ultimate weapon of the hat of disguise. <laughs> uh, what was I playing? What class was I? It doesn't matter what class you're playing. Uh, when you have a hat of disguise, Floyd, you can take it and do anything. You, you know what? Just forget it. <laughs> No, and it's true. I love my hats of disguise. That's why I've hyped up the price of them in my current campaign, because now other people know how to break the game. <laughs> so really, I, I think one of the main reasons that you and I really enjoy D&D, Floyd, and <laughs> Alex does not as much, yeah. is because um, it, it's a very chaotic medium to tell a story in, whether you're a player or... DM. It's true. You can't really, you make plans and then they don't quite work out and then sometimes there's something that'd be really cool if it would happen, but it doesn't make any practical sense for it to happen. Yeah. Well, uh, and then like for me as the DM, that is actually one of the things that I find the most fun is going, all right, so this is what's going to happen. Now, how the heck are they going to screw this up? <laughs> and I try to, I try to in, you know, beforehand think of, well, if I was in their position, I would do this, 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 or this. Well, I'm going to make it where if they do this, then that'll be next to impossible. But if they do this, that might work. And then I go in there and they try, they find something completely different. I'm like, well, I'm just in for the ride at this point. And, like, that's one of the things I actually really enjoy is trying to kind of I, – I, I make points. I'm like, all right, at some point they'll they'll hit this point, and then after that they need to get to this point, and then these are the main ways to get there. And then I just try to see what they come up with. And that's part of the, that's part of the thing that I enjoy the most is the weird-ass stuff that they come up with. Because <laughs> my players come up with some freaking weird-ass stuff. My gosh. Mufasa. <laughs> The, the stuff he does. I don't know. My my experience with D&D is very, very similar to my experience watching the TV show Adventure Time. And, of course, when I found out yeah. that when, they, when they're coming up with Adventure Time sketches or little segments, they get them from playing D&D, I was like, of course, it makes complete sense. They... I, I don't know. There is just something about Adventure Time and me playing D&D that just brings out the absolute, like pointless meaninglessness to life in my mind and and I just like rock back and forth as I like ponder the response 
Existentialism or nihilism? <laughs> nihilism! That's it! D&D and Adventure Time are nihilistic, are, are like per, like perfect expressions of nihilism. Go deeper into this thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so existentialism versus nihilism. They are both responses to the acknowledgement that life is meaningless. However, existentialism is more about trying to find your own personal meaning to life. Nihilism, on the other hand, is more about accepting the fact that life is meaningless and that none of your choices or decisions have any meaning whatsoever and so it doesn't matter what you do so you might as well just get the most pleasure out of life as possible see when i'm playing D &D, <laughs> i play in D. I play D D to hang out with a couple of close friends usually drink a beer and just hang out and have a good time and just see where the story leads us and that's that's my experience with D D is just to kind of come up with a story together with close friends that is i'm really i'm really here on a Yeah, that's true. That is true. You know, it, but I fun. find in in my head, I find playing a single player game by myself in my house a lot more pointless to me than playing D and D with a couple friends. You're playing the wrong single player games. <laughs> no, dude. And I love. There is some great games out there, and. And mainly thanks to you, I'll give you the credit, I found some really fun single-player games. But I can't get into them as much anymore. <clears throat> uh, lately, I found myself wanting to play multiplayer games. And just games where I can talk with friends and hang out with friends more. I don't like the single-player stuff as much anymore. And um, that's one thing I still love about D&D, though. Is, like I said, is I get to hang out with friends and do come up with a story together. And to me, that isn't as pointless as sitting at home at my computer playing a single player game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really see it as, um, Alex, when you play, you, uh, you have trouble setting a side. Well, like, most people are like, okay, you know, there's a dragon out there, we gotta kill it, so my character would find that very serious and would take care of it. Well, your character is all recognized that something they're doing ultimately matters. Somehow your characters are meta-conscious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your, your characters are meta-conscious. That's what they are. I like that. I like that. Well, the, okay, La the, one of the last times we talked about this, we kind of ca created a continuing story arc for one of my character or for the character that I would play if I ever joined you guys. Mm -hmm. What was it? It was a guy who had been I don't cursed remember. or killed or something and so, or cursed or killed in a magical way so that whenever he was killed he would come back to life as a different creature mm -hmm. but he had this friend who was a mosquito which he called no it was a firefly that he called Skeeter, Skeeter because he thought it was a mosquito. No no his the kid's name was originally Skeeter. Oh, but everyone thought he was a, thought that you thought he was a mosquito, <laughs> but you just called him Skeeter. Yeah, but he, uh, um, he's the perfect example of my feelings towards Dean. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. Um, and here's the other thing, though, is that you, in my opinion, don't have the right mind for D and D because the first question that I ask people, and if they're interested in playing D and D, I say. When you're reading a book, can you envision it? Nope, can't do that. If you can envision a book in your head when you're reading it, you generally have more fun in D&D, in my experience, than people that can't envision it. Yep, can't, nope, don't have a visual mind at all. Because like Mr. H and I, you can envision a book in your head. I know you can. Oh, yeah. It's really weird really looking. why I got interested in making movies. Because like, I'd read books and I'd be like, oh, I can see it. I want yeah. people to see what they see. I and, just don't have a budget of a hundred million dollars to do that. Right, and I'm also very visually minded, um, and so to be able to create a world and characters, and see that in my head, and actually be able to play those characters and actually see them in the world that I created is very, very fun to me. You lucky son of a bitch! I'm so lucky. <laughs> I just sit over here in my. Lack of visual imagination, pondering life's greater questions. Well, and like, and like, in in my current campaign, I've spent the last 
year just kind of on and off in my free time when I'm bored working on a world for this for this campaign that I've been doing. I've spent probably 20 hours working on the map for this world. It's super detailed. The edges are all like I've got the super fancy details and crap and it's all the Celtic knots and stuff that I've done in ink along the borders and this map has taken me ages and as I'm coming up with the map I'm like oh and this is the history of that and this is and I've got a history and like and it's just I just do that like and I'll be out I'll be at my work working and I'll start coming up with things and I start thinking about it and I'll start writing it down and it ends up in the map and that ends up in the campaign and then when I've spent that much time on the, the map when I'm in that game playing it, it's so much cooler because I'm actually there in this little tiny part of this giant world that I've created. But yeah, so I, I love it personally. Yep, nope, don't. Yep, not my thing. <laughs> now, I really first got into it because um, I joked earlier about always being the DM, but I pretty much always am the DM because I thought it was a great way to tell stories I wanted to tell without actually having to write them down properly so people could read them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plus, you know, I got a knack for improvising, and that's really important in Indiana. <laughs> it's very important. Like, like, well, like, like, uh, it's like uh, they're going to do all kinds of crazy stuff that you didn't think of. It's amazing. Your players, doesn't matter how smart or stupid they are, they will figure out things that you never thought possible, and then you think logically about it, and you're like, that would work. <laughs> or, or they will ignore the obvious. Yes. Or, yes. They won't even see it. Yeah. I, um... Yeah, and, and that's, like I said, one of the things that I really enjoy. But the other thing is that your DM can make or break your experience. I had a friend that I DM'd with, or I played D&D &D with, and his D&D &D sessions were awful. They were physically painful. I hated them. And he took complete control of the game from us. And there were things that would happen where we would try to react, and it doesn't matter what we did, he would refuse to let it work. And 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 he he it was it was like watching a movie more than actually playing a game. As a DM, you've got to leave your world and the options completely open to your players. Um, I, I think that the only time I ever really kind of controlled a game session was to create this very cinematic experience that they then had to break out of. Nah. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I did kind of bend a couple of my own personal rules there to get them to that position. Um, but afterwards, when we were talking about it afterwards, they said that they really enjoyed the outcome of that experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Um, so a DM can really make or break your experience. Well, you're, you've been my only DM, so what does that say about my experience? That, seems, that says to me that you are a hopeless case, Alex. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, technically I ran a session with you in it, Alex. It was just a one-off. It was at uh, Floyd's college, and he bugged me saying, here, come up with something I want to play. And it was that mystery with a werewolf. <laughs> that one was so... I remember that. That was the one where you were our kid in it, and me and my girlfriend were the other two characters, and we ended up like... <laughs> it, we, we, weren't, we weren't... Our characters were just random characters, but then the way we treated you, you ended up becoming like our kid by the end. Was that and then the we one all where we died. were flirting with the guards? No, I, no. She wasn't your kid. You guys murdered him because you got set up with his nonsense. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I was so mad that you killed a fellow member of the party just because he was really annoying. <laughs> you were instantly attacked by the werewolves. Your half-dead state from uh, killing Alex. <laughs> uh, and I use that sort of story that. Um, to scare my players now, I say. I, uh, I won't stop you from killing members of the party, but the last players who did that were immediately attacked by a lot of <laughs> Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. I think that was the only game I've ever played a fighter. A little weird. Yeah, and he was a ranged fighter, too. I used a, I used a musket. <laughs> Whee! Segway! It's segue time. Now it's for having a little, 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 little blah, blah. new topic. So I haven't had the most positive D and D experiences, uh, but 
I've also had a difficult time getting into games like The Elder Scrolls or Fallout 3, which you also seem to really enjoy. Ah, yes. Sandbox games. Sandbox games. And this is games. another thing that I feel like if you have the quality that where you can enjoy a sandbox game, you will enjoy D&D. D&D being the ultimate sandbox game. I have had such a difficult time with, like, The Elder Scrolls games and Fallout. The only time that I think I ever really in, enjoyed playing those games were the two times that, like the, the time we played Fallout 3 and the time we played Skyrim where we were just on like voice chat the entire time mm-hmm. we were playing it for like two or three days and that was a lot of fun um, and those games though like when, when I'm playing one of those games I'll usually come up with a character and I play the game as if I am that character and I enjoy it a lot more you're playing it as if you're enjoying it a lot more no, I play the game as a character, and when I do that, I enjoy it a lot more. Because, like, I mean, I know as you, you go in and you just start randomly, you kill stuff, and you steal stuff, and you run around. And... That's because I like chaos. Yes. <laughs> but you don't and really... you wonder why I play a chaotic, see, like... neutral, or chaotic <laughs> evil character. I always play, like... I'll... Because they're meaningless! Meaningless! You know what's meaningless? I've never enjoyed playing one of the chaotic characters. It's meaningless to me. Setting those boundaries for yourself playing a good person when it's so easy to take things is so much more fun to me. Yeah. And it's, it, I think it really is about boundaries. Um, like, I remember reading somewhere, they're talking about how artists love boundaries because they let them do their best work. I don't know. I thought it was much better than that. <laughs> what I'm just doing whatever I want, it's kind of an amorphous, of a, it's not much of a character. It's like, here's a guy who acts erratically. Yeah, well, it looks like this is a video game. <laughs> well, and it's like, it's the same reason that, like, it's the same reason you don't play a game with cheats on. It's not as satisfying because you can do everything instantly. It's a lot more fun when you have to work for those things and you set those boundaries for yourself where you're like, yeah, I could steal that thing. I could just walk by and I wouldn't have that little bit of money or that little bit of, you know, thing to make me stronger, but I'm a good person, damn it. And it's just like that little bit of character there. I don't know. It makes it more satisfying to me. Like one of my favorite characters in the sandbox game was in Fallout 3. And I just decided that my character was a huge nerd and like a high intelligence and low strength and everything. But he read a lot of comic books, and he thought he was the hero. He wanted to be the hero, saving people. And I just, I just, any kind of decision came up, I said, okay, would the hero do this decision? And um, it led to some interesting consequences, because there's like a quest where this guy, the scientist, has accidentally created mutant fire ants by experimenting on this ant queen. I remember that quest. <laughs> Yeah, and so as the hero, I'm like, these ant guys, they're the bad guy, they're terrorizing this town, I'm going to go there, I'm going to kill the queen. And he doesn't want you to kill the queen, but I killed the queen, because that's what the hero would do. And when I came back, he's like, why did you kill the queen? I need to do more experiments for the good of science. And I'm like, there's like an option where you can say, wait, so you're not sorry for what you did or something? He's like, I'm sorry all these people died, but I was trying to save the world, you know? I must continue my research. And at that point, you know, He's not a bad character, the scientist guy. He's not like one of the ha ha evil guys you run into. But my character's like, wait a minute. This guy, he's not attacking me. But he's not sorry. He's evil. <laughs> and I pulled out my revolver and I blew him away. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that would be really cool if this was a movie. Because here's this guy, he's like, I'm the hero. You're bad. That means you have to die, even though you've done nothing bad to me. We are back from a short little intermission, which you probably, well, you didn't experience. You just experienced a brief. Through the magic of editing, it didn't even exist. Where were we, Mr. H? Well, I was just talking about some character I made, but I think the really important thing is, um, Alex, I think you prefer enjoying a well-crafted story yep. than creating your own. Yep. Yeah. That's because I have a word processor to create my own in. 
And I, I honestly think a lot of this comes back to the different, like, and I may be crazy here, but I feel like a lot of that comes back with the different, um, like, the memory stuff. Like, I see that stuff in my, I'm very visually minded, and you're not. Nope. And I think a good chunk of that has to do with that. I don't know why, but I feel like it does. I feel like I'm at an intervention. <laughs> we love you. This is how your alcoholism <laughs> is hurting us. <laughs> not wrong no just yeah different. well and that's the thing though it's like i love a good a well-crafted story also like i i and really enjoy it we actually got mr h here today we can talk about um <laughs> we can talk about uh um gosh that one game that he hates that i'm blanking on the name of that he likes bugging me about mm-hmm. mass effect mass effect mass see effect. i loved mass effect and i haven't played the third one yet but i loved the first two mass effects um, well, if we can't talk about the third one, then I can hardly do any of my complaints. <laughs> <laughs> well, and like, but that is a well-crafted story uh, game, uh, and there's not a lot of role-playing you can do in that game. I mean, you just, it's, you a are little bit, a little bit. A renegade or paragon, Shepard. Yeah. You're either a badass or extremely nice. And I can say that Save the children I let them burn. One thing I kind of dislike. Because I was, I tried to make characters my own, and I decided in the first game that my Shepard, I did Renegade, but I decided it's because he's a very practical person. You gotta do the practical thing over what's necessarily the most moral thing, you know, uh, to save the most people. But in the later games, I just kind of made the Renegade option. Um, I don't care about the rules, I'll do what I want. Though some of them still follow that, like, Especially the renegade interrupts where you just shoot someone in the middle of the scene. You know? Those are the best. <laughs> the one where you punch that reporter was always my favorite. <laughs> Didn't matter how Paragon I was, I always punched the reporter. <laughs> she was so I mean, annoying. For someone who wanted to be practical, in the first game, I made all the wrong choices for that kind of person. Saving like, Caden. Uh, Did you save Caden? Oh, I saved Ashley. I just always liked Ashley better. Um, I think I'm in the minority on that, from what I hear. I thought you said you saved Caden. No, I saved Ashley. Your huh. girlfriend saved Yeah, she Kayden. saved Caden. I think the reason I chose Ashley was because she reminded me a lot of my girlfriend at the time. Oh, gosh, that's terrifying. Well, I, I don't like... I'm not a huge Caden fan. He's too whiny. Well, yeah, Caden was Karth, but... He was Karth. Caden yeah, Onassi. Ashley, because she was, you know, a fellow soldier, and Caden was, um... He had uh, bionics and stuff. And Caden was a prissy pants. Ashley was a damaged girl. I like you damaged love your damaged girls. girls. <laughs> so like, uh, what was that giant bug? There's like one of them left, the queen, and you gotta decide whether to kill it or not. The arachni queen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually um, didn't kill the arachni queen, which is totally not... Like I said, I want them to be practical, but it's completely impractical. But it's like, somehow I'm like, no, I can't kill it. It's the last of its space bug kind. I have a, I like space bugs for some reason. <laughs> space bugs. <laughs> Did you kill the Ragnar Queen? No. I didn't either. <laughs> kept, kept it alive. Yeah, me too. I wonder what happens if you kill it. <laughs> no comment. Bites tongue. Yeah, yeah, I know what happens, but I can't talk about it. <laughs> Episode three. Somebody needs to find. Well, I see. That's the thing that sucks, though. I recently lost a computer, and so I lost all my save files. So to play three, I need to play replay two. But I cannot bring myself to play two unless I've replayed one, so that I get the love interest I want, and so that I get the Paragon or Renegade points that I want, because I'm just that kind of a person. So that means I got to start from one, which I've already played like four times. It's like rubbing sandpaper on my face. I've played it way too many times. But to kind of get back to just looking at different games in general, um, I would argue that Mass Effect does not have a very good story. I mean, it's kind of an okay story, but it does have great characters. Yeah, I'm that's true. I yeah. say that it doesn't have good characters. It's got, the characters are where it's at. Yeah. And Alex, you've always loved character-driven pieces. Yep, and it's actually thanks to you that I realized that. Really? Yeah, because I was was it I was complaining about three hundred and how I thought the plot sucked and 
Mr. H was like, it's not, it had a bunch of plot, but it had zero character. And well, and that's like, well, I remember back in the day. Yeah, when we were back in the day, when, when we were younger and we were working on our, our story together, we were coming up with this crazy plot. That's all we cared about was the plot, the plot, the plot, the plot. And then I remember you figuring out the character thing and we thought about it and we're like, oh, that's what we like. All these things that we liked didn't have great plot. They had good character development. And we just didn't realize that. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. That the Mass Effect doesn't have a good a great story. It has great characters. Um it's but that, really the story, even in one and two, it's a bit of a mess. It's like, okay, the Reapers, they want to kill everything. Why? In the second one, there's the whole human reaper thing, which doesn't make a lot. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Series low point. I, I do that agree. That is my least favorite point that of felt the like entire a, series. That felt like a Legend of Zelda boss. I, oh my gosh! Just like... <sighs> Mm. And the thing was that the whole fight leading up to that point was so awesome. Like yeah. making those decisions and going, all right, lead these people back to the ship. All right, we were going to take you two this way. We'll take you two this way. And I'm going to go this way with this guy. And not knowing if you made the right decision or not, that was leading up to that point was so cool. Like it felt yeah, like you. All, that's all character stuff. You, yeah. you care. Because you've gotten to know these characters, and you don't know if they're gonna make it. And you and you really, you know them well enough. and you've really have to make those hard decisions, and you feel like you're in a movie or something. Which reminds me of this point at the end of three, which I won't actually specifically talk about because <laughs> somebody hasn't played it yet. But one of my absolute favorite moments of three was completely removed in the um, extended cut. Of oh, the really? Movie. Yeah, because they they added a bunch of, like, explanation and dialogue. And and so one of my favorite parts, because what's so fantastic about it, in my opinion, is that you you basically are... Have you you don't know who's going to live and who's going to die, and it doesn't matter because you got to save the universe. Right, of course. And nothing matters. But they, they, they ruin that by, you're doing that, and then... Dialogue, explaining everything, exposition time, totally break up the emotional impact because people didn't get enough information. I'm actually super stressed out about the ending of three because I, like I said, I have no idea how it ends. It's, but I hearing these crazy things people talking about, like that bad people hate it or people love it. I'm like, good God, it's what happens? Not that bad. So. <laughs> So I've got I've got a little devil and a little angel telling oh. me it's not bad and it is bad. So and here's the thing though, my they actually add a one little extra ending to the end of in, in the extended cut, and that's the ending that I prefer. But in order to get that, I have to get rid of the other thing that I love. So well, it's a, it's a thing, but he, you know, one it's thing I can't say is in Mass Effect characters are still strong. Yep. It's really about their relationship. It's just everything else that you can't look at or think about too carefully. The Witcher had great character and story. Yes. The Witcher The Witcher was a very, very well, well crafted game. Two. Two, I should two. say. I should specify two. <laughs> I I hated one, but that was mainly a gameplay problem because the gameplay was like one had <sighs> many, many, many problems. But two was so good. I freaking it was good. The only problem with it was it was so darn hard. And like I'd been playing really easy games up to that point. You actually said this exact same thing. Did in, I in episode two? I just I'll cut just... it out then. <laughs> just 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 shut it down. Actually, what's we actually should probably. Shut this one down. I think that's about it for this week's episode of Cool Down Timer. Tune in next week. Hopefully we can make this a weekly thing if we can get enough episodes amassed. But yep. tune in next week for our next episode on something entirely different. Yeah, and a special thanks to Mr. H for helping us with this one. Yay! Anytime, pal. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. Just come down from Alaska and we'll have you live so we don't have to use the phone. Again. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Thank you, everybody, for listening to our episode. And visit cooldowntimer.com to listen to all the other episodes of our wonderful <laughs> chit chats about 
life, love, and the pursuit of gameliness. Yeah, and gameliness? <laughs> oh, and go check out Mr. H's blog. I don't remember the name of it. Something Nebula. It's a blog. It's the Page Nebula. The Page, the page Nebula. Nebula. The Page Nebula. So I better get going. Okay. All right. Talk to you later, dude. Bye. So, yes, it, uh, it's like the Page Nebula or the Page Nebula.wordpress.com or something like that. So, look up the Page Nebula. I don't. I expect that there's only. One, <laughs> there aren't many things called the Page Nebula. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it for us this week. Uh, we love you for listening to us in our early episodes. We're going to go now. Shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> We survived.